Brothels closed down, the police force was laid off because crime went so low, Bible sales skyrocketed throughout the nation. This is the story of the Welch Revival and its leader, Evan Roberts. I'm Robert Slayton, and this is God's Generals. The evangelicals and the Pentecostal movements have all valued the great story of the Welch Revival. It is one of the most exciting revivals that I have read about and studied in all of my years of reading all the great leaders and the revival movements. And that's what we're going to talk about today, is how God chose a young man named Evan Roberts. He was in his 20s when God chose him. Evan Roberts was born in Wales. His family worked in the coal mines like he did as a young man himself. He was known as he'd go into the coal mines. You know, back in those days, there was no child labor law, so children and teenagers worked like adult men worked in the mines. And so he would carry his Bible with him and go down into the mines and during their breaks they would he would read the scriptures and during the lunchtime he'd read his scriptures and he'd make a little place in the wall of the mine and left his Bible in there sometimes. Well, one time there was an explosion and the explosion burnt the pages of his Bible and became the famous scorch Bible that he would use throughout his life and throughout the revival that was to come. So Evan Roberts to look at his life is very interesting. His family was Christian and so they grew up teaching the Bible stories and going in the church, but Evan Roberts took it a step further. He seemed to have a personal relationship with God that did not have to come via the pastor or via his parents. He had it one for himself. And it was so intense at times, people would notice him walking down the roads to going to school or going home or going to the store. And he would just stop on the side of the road and he would just talk to himself. It looked like he was talking to the air. And folks walking by or in horse and buggy or some of the early cars, but many horse and buggy, they would look at this young man, you know, talking to himself and they thought there was something wrong with him. So his parents had him taken to a special doctor to find out if there was. And the doctor came back and said that Evan Roberts had a religious fixation about him, that he would grow out of it in time. Well, I don't think his religious fixation ever stopped. It grew bigger and bigger and bigger. And I don't think they should have thought there was a problem because of the young man stopping and talking to God. If young men would talk to God more, they would not be talking to the wrong people. So Evan Roberts is also a young man that influenced his friends. Now I think when you study the life of him, especially his early years, his friendships are important to consider. We are all influenced by who we hang around, who we talk with, who we are asking questions of, and their reactions to our conversations and our activities. And Evan Roberts was one of those. If you couldn't find him at school, you couldn't find him at home, you might find him playing sports with his friend, but most likely you would find him at church or doing something around his home church of Moriah Chapel. And so he was off at a revival meeting and uh, one of his friends had gone with him to attend this meeting and it was time for them to pray. And so they all got on their knees by the pew where they were at and some walked forward to the front of the church as the service was coming to an end. In those days, people were invited to come to the altar and pray and that's how they would end the service. In our days, we usually sing with a happy song and we leave with a shout and we leave the service. That we, In those days, they actually prayed the end of the service. And Evan Roberts knelt down and the Spirit of God came on him and spoke to him and showed him that there was coming a great revival to Wales and he was going to be a part of that great revival. And in this vision and this visitation, God said to him that over 100,000 souls would come to him in a short amount of time. So when this vision ended, he came out of it and he turned to his friend and said, do you believe that God can give us 100,000 souls in Wales? And his friend said, yes. Now to me, I'm so glad that he had a friend that went, yes. What would your friend say? Would your friend say, I don't think so, and give you all the reasons why this cannot happen? It reminds me in the scriptures about Daniel and his three friends. When the king was going to kill all the wise men because they couldn't interpret his dream. And Daniel said, give me some time. He leaves the king's throne room and goes to his friends and says, we've got to pray. And all of them get together and pray and get an answer. Thank God that we can have those kind of friends. And Evan Roberts did too. He goes back to his home church of Moriah Chapel asked the pastor if he could have a youth meeting after the Sunday morning service. Well, mainly adults showed up and one or two youth showed up. And in this youth meeting of about 14 people, he expressed what God had said to him. And he prayed this famous prayer, O Lord, bend us, bend us, O Lord. And that was the prayer that began to ignite the Spirit of God in the heart of man in Wales. And from this little revival service or this little youth meeting sprung the revival meetings. And it began to grow. It began 
begin to increase to where it affected the nations and now a hundred and some years later we still admire it we still love it. Now some of the great happenings in the revival besides the great salvations is that when you read and research the move of God in Wales here are some statistics during the time of the Welsh revival which is begin in 1902 3 and 4 in that time period and then begin that kind of uh, slide down or begin to decline. During the time of the, of the height, there was policemen were laid off of the police force because crime went so low. Drunkenness statistically went down because people quit drinking. They went to church and drank the new wine, not the old wine. Also, the Bible Society recorded that they had a record number of orders for Bibles and to several years after the revival ended, they were still filling the orders to print Bibles that were, that were ordered during the revival. And so those are a few things. Now, here are some things that I enjoy when I read about the Welch Revival. I love the story about the, the pit ponies in the coal mines. When the revival hit so strong in Wales, and Wales is mainly a coal mining type of uh, a country, that the coal miners quit cussing. And you know, when you're not born again, you'd say all what you want to say, you use profanity. And the ponies, they don't know bad words from good words. All they know is that sound meant go and the other sound meant stop. And so when the coal miners got saved, or as a newspaper said, when the coal miners got religion, they quit cussing. And the little ponies got confused because the coal miner wouldn't say damn to go or say something else for it to stop. And so the little ponies got all confused and the coal mine companies had to go out and buy a whole new herd of horses and train them on how to carry the coal out and bring the cart back down. And so to me that was so exciting to know that the revival had affected the ponies and they didn't know what to do because the coal miners quit cussing. The other thing that I find very intriguing about the Welsh revival was during the time uh, every year, like every nation does, is that we have uh, sports events. And so in Wales, during the time of the revival, uh, they didn't have a Super Bowl or a World Cup for their nation. When you read in 1901, who won the uh, football game, who won the, the big tournament, and you get down to the year of the revival, and then it's written in the name where you should put the name of the team that won, and it just says revival. There was no tournament because everybody was going to church and having a religious experience. Now that's like saying in America that we didn't have a Super Bowl because everybody was going to church and more concerned about God and the condition of their soul than they were about the Super Bowl. Bowl. That would be a big event. The other great thing about the Welsh Revival was that the business hours in the nation changed. When no one's shopping, why keep the store open? When no one is going to the restaurants, why keep it open? The business hours of Wales during the time of the Revival changed because business concluded early because no one was buying or selling or doing business. They were going home, getting dressed, going to church, and maybe be there to midnight to two or three o'clock and then start again. Can you imagine in America or in London or in Berlin that all of a sudden a move of God comes and the business hours of the whole nation changes to accommodate the people wanting to go to church and wanting to be around God and wanting to be moved by the moving of the Spirit in their own soul. That's what happened in Wales. These are just a few stories that shows you the impact. The young people were involved, the children were involved, the elderly were involved. There was over a hundred preachers that we know of that was being used by God all over Wales at one time. So it was not just around Evan Roberts' personality, even though he was the leader. He's the one that God chose to be the catalyst. But there was at least a hundred people, hundred ministers, that were being used all over Wales. Who's 
Von Horn, I dub and bear. 